And welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GBSU Basketball Weekly Insider. I'm Jeremy Bolker alongside play-by-play uh, -play voice DJ Foster. And, of course, head coach Rick Wesley going to be joining us on the uh, program here as well. Chris Dorsey, who just made the starting lineup here the last couple of games, playing some great basketball here for your Grand Valley State Lakers. Well, welcome, everyone. We are at Jets Pizza. We are live in Allendale, just about a mile west of Grand Valley's campus. We have an outstanding pizza special going on right now. That's the Rick Wesley special, one large pizza with a topping on it for six bucks you can't go wrong with that and that's of course during the duration of the program but uh as we welcome in uh, dj foster uh, uh dj grand valley now 13 and 10 overall big stand of home games much needed after playing five games within 10 days yeah it was a, it was a, a tough stretch with you said four of five on the road in a 10 game stretch everyone in the conference had to go through it but i'm not sure anyone else in the league had four road games including a trip to the UP, so we'll talk to Coach about uh, the last week of games. And uh, like you said, a big four-game homestand coming up. Lakers are still tied for fifth place, still a lot uh, a lot on the table. They can kind of control their own destiny here. And uh, three of the four teams ahead of the Lakers, Grand Valley State, will play in these in this final uh, couple of weeks. So certainly some chance to uh, make up some ground as well. And, uh, again, four straight games here at home uh, where the Lakers are 7-3 uh, and three in the year. Well, if you are on the area, come on out and join us. We're here t broadcasting till 7 o'clock. We will be back and talk some Laker hoops right after this break here on the Grand Valley Sports Network. our kids here, went to school here, we live here, we are the home team. And welcome back into the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider with head coach Rick Wesley, DJ Foster, Jeremy Bolker here with you. We're bringing in head coach of the Grand Valley State Laker men, 13-10 and 10 on the year, 9-7 and 7 in conference play, and a tie for fifth place in the GLIAC standings. Grand Valley State tied with Ashland and Wayne State. And uh, we bring in head coach Rick Wesley. Coach, how are we doing this week? Well, I've had better weeks, uh, <laughs> but uh, hoping this one is a, a better one than last one. We had a tough time last week. Uh, Three tough games, uh, certainly didn't play our best. Um, you know, so we're kind of regrouping this week. Uh, glad we're back home. We, Like you mentioned, we had a tough uh, schedule there, uh, five games in ten days, four of them on the road. That's certainly not uh, what you would ask for if you had a choice. But uh, uh, we got through it, and uh, now we've got to make up uh, – some lost ground here with a, a pretty good stretch of games here finishing up the season. How did the week start today practice-wise? Let's let's start with that. How did, how did you look? start to look ahead rather than look behind? Yeah, well, that's what I told the guys. I can't wait to put some distance between our, our, our last game and, and, uh, uh, you know, and moving forward. So uh, Mondays are always big, busy days for us. We lift weights on Monday. So uh, I think that's probably a good thing. That's one uh, part of our routine that, uh, you know, stays the same all through the season. I think the guys look forward to that. They get in there and – can't lift quite as hard as we do uh, earlier in the year, but we, you know, we try to maintain uh, the s strength that we got uh, in the off season, uh, which is so important late in the season. And as as you saw in those games last week, uh, we're not we're not as big and strong as a lot of the teams in our conference. So uh, it's important that we stay after that. And then we came on on the floor for about an hour and a half and uh, tried to work on some things to to get our offense going a little bit. Uh, you know, try to try to uh, uh, you know push push the pace a little bit, try to get a couple different wrinkles uh, in, in what we're doing, get a little bit more variety in our offense, and, and then just try to continue to reiterate to each individual player what they do best and try to encourage them to play to their strengths. Uh, you know, we, we've shown that we're a good team uh, uh, several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So, you know, some of us just get back to the basics and just get back to playing the way we're capable. And uh, physically, Coach, uh, just looking at those five games, um, how about how about as far as like the recovery time? Uh, I mean, I know you've been used to this throughout the season right now, but having those extra games in that amount of time and with the, the travel and maybe not, you know, having some of your, uh, you know, all the different things that you're used to having at home on the road. But but physically, where do you guys see you're at? Where do you think that you guys will be ready to, to really roll and, and start playing again? You know, it's really hard. It's hard to evaluate where you're at physically. I mean, you know, you have injuries and, you know, we have our fair share of them just like everybody else. But uh, you know, it's not like you've got a, a barometer on your, your belt or something. You look at it like, well, you're only at 80% or whatever. You know, we ran some sprints today, and you know, it's kind of a, a standard that we do um, over the course of the, uh, the season. We get seven sprints in six minutes, and everybody made them. So you know, we're you know we're huffing and puffing a little bit, but uh, I don't think we're uh, you know way off where we need to be. I think some of that is mental. You know, you. Watch Super Bowl yesterday. Guy played with a broken leg. I mean, so if you if you're in the right mindset when you're winning, you're never tired. You know, when you're losing, that's the first thing everybody says is that uh, you're worn out and you're fatigued. So I think a lot of that is mental. And then you know we try to you know talk to our team today about this time of the year to avoid that. Uh, you have to make sure you stay in a good routine. You got to stay hydrated. You got to make sure you're eating. Make sure you're getting rest. Um, you know, doing all the things, getting in the training room, getting the ice baths, doing all the things necessary to be at the top of your game because the difference is so small in a lot of these games. It's one or two possessions. It's one or two minutes. And, you know, to be able to be fresh and to be, um, you know, aggressive and to feel physically fit, uh, uh, you know, everybody's got to figure that out for themselves. Coach, uh, you had mentioned the Super Bowl. Is there something that you – and your coaching staff can maybe even take away from that game from New England about being down so much in that game to be able to come back that, you know, whether the players, I'm sure we're probably a lot of them watching that game too, about what, and that's why you play sports, but to never give up no matter what the odds are, you seem stacked against you. And everyone was saying that they had no chance at, at winning that game and to see them come back and, and win, I mean, well, that's a great thing about sports. There's not, uh, you know, there's not a script. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, uh, WWF wrestling or something. <laughs> you know, but but in, in, in uh, you know, real life sports, you never know. I mean, crazy things happen. And I've certainly seen my fair share of both good and bad. And yesterday, that certainly was uh, uh, an example of that. And I think, you know, the guys, if you don't quit, it's just amazing. If you continue to fight. Even sometimes you're fighting and it doesn't go your way and you get behind. But, um, you know, you keep competing hard and you keep giving yourselves a chance and sometimes things break in your favor. Uh, maybe a call goes your way or you get a fluke. Uh, but, it, but it doesn't happen if you don't continue to compete hard. And, um, you know, so that's, that's a, that was my little bit of my disappointment late last week to our last game. I just didn't feel like we competed very hard. Um, and I think when you do that, even if, you, if it doesn't go your way, you, you leave feeling like, okay, we gave it our best shot. Um, but it's amazing when you do that, you know, sometimes good things happen. And, uh, how do you get yourself to stay in that mode? You know, sometimes it's, it's a group of guys. Sometimes, you know, it clearly it seems like with the uh, Patriots, you guys think Tom Brady, there's something about him that he instills that in others. He mm -hmm. refused to quit. He's the, he's the leader. He's the quarterback. And everybody, I think, is almost afraid <laughs> to not to follow, his, yeah. to follow mm -hmm. his lead. And, and from an organizational standpoint, all the way up to the coach, to the owner, you know, they're all they're all lockstep uh, on the same page, and, and clearly that has something to do with their success. Here in the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider with head coach Rick Wesley, this segment is brought to you by Cardinal Buses. Go in comfort, go in style, and go green. Go with Cardinal Buses. And coach, you know, with the, with the three losses last week, what was your biggest takeaway, or maybe your message to the team? You kind of mentioned, uh, you know, the desire to compete, but what did you see that you know maybe was the I don't know the overall factor uh, in those games. Was there one kind of kind of theme that you can get straightened out? Yeah, one thing that's well, fixable. Yeah, well, I don't. It's, it's never quite that easy. It's a combination right. of everything. I think uh, you know certainly our physical toughness. Uh, we've got we've got to raise the bar. We're we're late in the conference season. It's second time around. It's not unusual that uh, you know your offense can sputter a little bit. Um, you know teams <laughs> we're we're so familiar with each other. There's no secrets. Um, especially in the North Division second time around. Um, you know, so I think you just got to do what you do. You got to do it better, and you've got to do it through contact. And, and 
and you've got to capitalize on opportunities, whether they're you know layup opportunities, free throws, uh, the other team making mistakes, mm -hmm. matchups that present themselves. I mean, it's just unless you're just a dominant team, um, you know, there's, your margin for error is not that great. And uh, and again, so we we're trying to maximize our opportunity to win by limiting our mistakes, clean up some of our execution, um, you know, perhaps look in our, our, our bag of tricks, our arsenal of things that we do, throw some things out that haven't worked and try to really uh, focus more on some things that are working. But I think it still comes down to the, the teams that win um, big are certainly talented. We're not winning big, but the teams that are successful, I think they're successful because they want it. <laughs> they want to be successful. And uh, it's a shared uh, goal throughout the organization, throughout the team. <laughs> We'll uh, talk more opportunities after this break, uh, including uh, Chris Dorsey and his opportunity that he had on, on Thursday. So we'll talk about that right after this. This is the GBSU Basketball Weekly Insider with Rick Wesley, all presented by Rivertown Honda here on the Grand Valley Sports Network. kids here, went to school here, we live here, we are the home team. Good looking crowd out here at Jets Pizza in Allendale enjoying some wonderful pizza and uh, uh, guys, hey, uh, Jim Pettis came over earlier on today, and he wants to play Mr. Matchmaker here with, with, with romance. And what we're talking about is heart-shaped pizzas starting on Friday because, as we know, a week from tomorrow is going to be Valentine's Day. So that's probably going to be the, uh, the Budweiser hot seat question. Next week is what are you getting your significant other for uh, – uh, for Valentine's Day, not that you want to ruin the surprise, of course, but you know, as I say, heart-shaped pizzas start on Friday through uh, Tuesday, twelve ninety-nine. Really neat sort of a deal. Uh, and then you can, of course, get heart-shaped cinnamon sticks or uh, cheesy bread as well. So check that out more online at the Jets Pizza. But uh, thanks to the good folks here at uh, at Jets Pizza and Jim Pettis and the folks over here. So this is the uh, Basketball Weekly Insider with uh, Rick Wesley and. Let's go into that Budweiser hot seat question. You heard we were talking a little bit referencing the Super Bowl. We found out one of the news stories right now. Unfortunately, Tom Brady lost his jersey, or somebody might have taken it out of his uh, uh, jersey uh, or out of his uh, locker room bag. And, Coach, in your years of coaching and your years of an athlete, have you ever run across a situation where something all of a sudden became lost or, and you'd think, man, who would take that or how did this get missing? Anything like that? Well, we've, you know, we had a lot of road trips. You know, you have different players uh, have forgotten shoes over the years. We've had to make, you know, several rushes to the local uh, sporting goods stores to try to find a you know, pair of size 15s on the road. You know, we've had that happen. <laughs> I, you know, as coaches, we constantly are, you know, somebody's always forgetting a belt or I forgot my dress shoes this year. I had to borrow Damien, one of our student assistant <laughs> shoes for the game. He had to go with tennis shoes. Uh, so, you, you know, we've had that kind of thing happen a lot. I, I remember one time, at Iowa State, uh, we had our uniforms. Um, for whatever reason, they were stored at a building other than the one we played in. It came game time, and the uh, student assistants uh, who got the uniforms out couldn't find the uniforms. And the equipment man who was housed in another place we couldn't find him. And we never did find him by game time. And we had to play a game with, uh, you know, we had, we had the home tops. But we had the away pants. So we had white tops with maroon pants and that. That was a little embarrassing to see. And, uh, I thought to say shirts and skins yeah, or something. The equipment, yeah, man, the equipment man didn't look, keep his job after that. He was gone the next week. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, that was kind of a strange thing. 
to see, especially as you look back at the pictures after the season was over. You thought, did well, did you guys good. ever find them? Well, they were him? locked up. They were locked up in another place on campus that nobody okay. but this one person had a key to, and he was out of sorts and couldn't be found, and, <laughs> you know, the game was going to start. Uh, so that was a – it wasn't good for us, and it certainly wasn't good for him <laughs> long-term employment-wise. But uh, Thanks for reliving that moment, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. so I hope that guy's not listening yeah. right now. Yeah, I know. But, I've, you know, I've got a pair a couple we'll – buy of him a piece of pizza. A couple know, times I've had to go buy a pair of shoes and – you know, I, I think about the coaches forget stuff just like the players mm -hmm. do sometimes, but we've got enough checks and balances. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often. Sure. That's sure. our Budweiser Hot Seat question presented by Mervine Beverage. Enjoy response. But, Coach, we do want to touch on, on the games from last week. Uh, the one at Wayne State was, was a good battle. We knew that was going to be the case at Detroit. Uh, you beat them earlier in the year in a game that you had mentioned to me a couple times last week. The difference was you played better than they did in the final 90 seconds. And this past Thursday, I think they played better than you for maybe the last two and a half, three minutes. Uh, you led for most of the ball game. You had a slim lead at halftime. It was a it was a close game all the way throughout, and they just ended up making a couple more plays uh, than you guys did. And you gave yourself a shot on the final uh, final two possessions with uh, with potential game tying three pointers. Yeah, we're we're very well or uh, evenly matched with them for whatever reason. It's it's not unusual. It seems like every year we kind of have those type type of games with them. And I, I just felt like going into the game. It was hard to envision that it wasn't going to be that again. I, I, I just felt like, you know, the matchups are, are are pretty equal. You know, there's they've got maybe some uh, advantage with uh, in terms of strength, but I thought we had, I, I hope we had a little bit more advantage with, uh, um, you know, our speed and quickness and perhaps our depth. Uh, and and the game kind of went that way. You know, it was a close game uh, the whole way, and I don't even know if that I would say they outplayed us in the last excuse me, a couple of minutes, it's just that um, for the most part, we missed free throws. You know, we came down the stretch. We had some good possessions. Uh, you know, the game wasn't without some mistakes on our part. But, you know, we, we got the ball in some good places and, and, and put them in a position where they had to foul. And then we went to the line and we just didn't capitalize on it. You right. know, and when and you're in a close game like that, uh, points are hard to come by. And, you know, free throws are free, you know. And mm -hmm. so, I, I, again, I think we missed five. I think we missed over the course of the game. Uh, we missed several more. We had some front ends of one and one. So our poor free throw shooting probably cost us uh, that game, I think, more than anything else. Now we're talking about uh, Grand Valley falling to a Wayne State on the road this past Thursday night, 65-62. But, Coach, coming in, uh, as you had sort of alluded to, uh, the, you know, top two defensive teams, you know, in the GLIAC and – this is sort of one of the things you always seem to say is the first one to 60 wins. Well, that was sort of the situation in this. Yeah, well, again, instance, that's you know? uh, again, when we play them, that's that's sort of how it goes. And, um, you know, they're very physical, very strong. Um, you know, they had, they had one guy, Spencer, kind of stepped up. I thought he had a game. He was a little bit of the X factor for mm -hmm. them. Uh, we did a pretty good job on uh, their front line guys. Uh, their little point guard uh, made some big plays late. And, again, uh, you know, they're one of those teams you don't really want to be behind late. Uh, they're, they're, they're not a, a mistake type of team. They're, they played things pretty close to the vest. And, um, you know, he made some good free throws, made, made some shots for him late, put the ball in his hands, and he was a good finisher for him. So, you know, we, we just, you know, again, we just, uh, you know, we just didn't, just didn't make the plays. We're right there. That was a game we could have, should have. Uh, you felt like we won, and uh, we just you know just didn't quite have enough at the end. Coach uh, Trevin Alexander had 16 points, nine rebounds. Luke Reiskamp, 13 points, nine rebounds. But your leading scorer in that game was Chris Dorsey into the starting lineup for the first time. 17 points, four assists, three boards, two steals. He got uh, promoted into the starting lineup. He's going to join us in the next segment. Give us just a couple words on uh, Chris before we bring him on. Well, Chris, you know he he certainly had a good game on, on Thursday, and probably had a good enough game that. It should have been enough to propel us to a victory, I think. Uh, uh, you know, he's, Chris has been playing a lot for us this year. He comes off the bench. He's been a good spark plug for us. He comes in, he's kind of an action Jackson guy, uh, impacts the game in a number of different ways. He scores. He, he, uh, he's a good passer. He's a good defender. He's a good rebounder for his mm -hmm. size. And, you know, he's a good a activity athlete. So, you know, he, he it's, it's a mixed bag. You know, we lose a little bit of that spark coming off the bench. But – at the same time, he had played well enough. He deserved that opportunity. So, um, you know, we he plays he and Miles and and uh, 
Luke and Trevin, I mean, we go through our whole perimeter uh, group. They all need to stay aggressive and continue to play and, and make plays for us, and, and that's kind of the name of the game and certainly what Chris does best. Well, we'll bring in junior guard Chris Dorsey when we come back on the GBSU Basketball Weekly Insider. It's all presented here uh, by Rivertown Honda. Got to get it at Rivertown Honda. Come on back for more Laker Talk right here on the Grand Valley Sports Network. kids here, went to school here, we live here, we are the home team. And welcome back in the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider here on the Grand Valley Sports Network, DJ Foster, Jeremy Bolker here with you. We, we're talking with head coach Rick Wesley about the uh, Grand Valley State Lakers who start a four-game homestand coming up uh, starting on Thursday. They'll be at home against Northwood at 8 p.m. And then Lake Superior State comes to town on Saturday, a 3 p.m. start. A bunch of uh, promotions and things. We'll talk about that later on the show, Jeremy, as well. Uh, but again, Grand Valley State at home for four in a row. And now we bring in uh, junior guard Chris Dorsey. Chris, how we doing? Doing good. How about you guys? Uh, we're great. Glad to have you on the show. I said we... We had you on the uh, recorded uh, interview a couple weeks ago. Wanted to get you on here again, especially after uh, you got the call into the starting lineup last Thursday against Wayne State. I guess th the first question for you would be, what is, what's the difference in your mind now for those couple games being in the starting lineup rather than coming off the bench? How do you approach the game any different or do you not? Um, I think I got to approach it in more of a I got to get my guys ready to go mindset and I got to – be more of a leader out there on the floor and then difference is when I come off the bench I'm more of just I'm trying to step in and be a spark plug like coach said I'm trying to be an energy guy and just come in and pick up where we're leaving off but uh, when you're starting you got to start the game at a high pace and you got to get a quick lead if you can and you just kind of start the game off right really is it difficult when you when you come off the bench you kind of get to see the guys for the first few minutes kind of see what Wayne State in this case, or, or Saginaw, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and then you get to come in and kind of kind of play off of that. At the start of the game, it's just it is what it is. You you I mean, when the when the ball's thrown up in the air, you got to start playing. You don't get any time to really kind of look at what's going on the floor and, and kind of try and pick what you want to be able to do. Is there any different difficulty there? Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Definitely, when you just when you're coming off the bench, as you said, you can just see what they're doing if they're dropping off screens, hedging off screens, mm -hmm. and you can adjust when you're coming into the game. But at the start of the game, everything's kind of new, and you kind of got to pick it up as you go and then adjust while you're playing in the game. What will you uh, say and do? Joined here by uh, Chris Dorsey on the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider. Talking about, uh, Chris, <coughs> we have to congratulate him, and I know DJ had said that, in the starting lineup for the first time uh, this past Thursday and then again on, on Saturday. And uh, it, it seems like not only physically but mentally, too, getting, getting involved with the start of the game. You said you have to hype up. You know, you want to make sure that you're in the same accord with some of your teammates, too. So what, what's that experience been like, and what have you had to do differently? Just more communication, knowing that, okay, hey, we're starting. I mean, you know, you know so many hours before the game or such amount of time you're going to be starting. So what's that like? Um, I think it's definitely more just making sure that the guys know that, okay, I'm, I'm starting now, but we're still going to be do the same things out there. Mm -hmm. I still got to just reassure them that we're okay and we're just still going to play ball like we always do and just make sure everybody's kind of on the same page and what we're trying to do in the game. Sure. Did it make the transition easier, too, that the rest of the starting lineup was, was the same? It wasn't like it was a whole a whole style change. I mean, Trevin and Luke were in there. Zach West was in there as well. I mean, it, did it make it easier that you – and you play with those guys a bunch yeah. anyway when you come off the bench. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're just playing five minutes and now you're the starter. Yeah, no, it was definitely easy. It wasn't that hard to adjust to. 
What did you try and uh, in, what were you seeing early in that Wayne State game? Because obviously you took over the game pretty early and had, uh, I think, 13 of your 17 in the first half. What were you seeing? What, what, was, uh, what was comfortable for you out there? Um, I just think the flow of the game was just it felt, it felt nice. Um, I was coming off screens, and they were kind of dropping off, so I could just get to my pull-up. And then I was getting easy layups, and it just – just felt nice out there. I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's just the flow of the game. And you had a nice cheering section there. I, mm -hmm. I noticed yeah. every time you scored or did something nice, they were they were jumping up and hollering mm -hmm. for you. Who was that? That was my uh, my Macomb, my junior college team. And they are uh, about 15 minutes away from Wayne State, and so they came out and supported me. So it was nice to see them. Very cool. Yep. Well, that that makes sense because uh, I mean, just with with your background, if you could tell tell the fans and the listeners out there about how you got to Grand Valley. Well. Um, First started off at Troy High School, and coming out of Troy High, I didn't have any offers. So I went to a junior college, Macomb Community College, and I played there for two years, and I had a blast there. I mean, those guys were really good to me, and I played pretty good there. And then Coach Wesley and uh, Coach Wallace came out, and they saw me play, and then they uh, offered me a spot, and then I came on campus and visited it and fell in love with it right away. What was what was it about Grand Valley that, that made you want to come here? I like the campus a lot. I mean, the campus is amazing. And then I like the team. I just felt nice. It was a good atmosphere. And I just thought it would be a good place and a good fit for me. How has how the transition been being one of the new guys? Because every year there's new guys, there's freshmen, there's transfers that come in. Uh, and being on that side of things when you already have, you know, some guys who have been here for, you know, a couple of seasons. The transition was, it was, it was pretty easy, actually, because I was here in the summertime, too. So I kind of got to know the guys before sure. the season really started. And, I mean, it, they welcome you with open arms, definitely. So it was pretty easy. So was it your first time on campus? Was it the middle of winter or was it during the summer? It was the middle of winter. <laughs> okay, wow. Well, that, that's good. It wasn't came. a big snowstorm or anything crazy, nope. was it? Nope. Okay. Well, that, that works out good. Uh, as, far as, uh, as far as a relative, too, that you're the cousin – of uh, Gerald Henderson, who's uh, currently playing with the 76ers, but a little bit of a background with the Bobcats or Hornets in the, uh, Portland and now playing with Philadelphia. Do you ever stay in contact at all with your cousin and Actually, very much at all? Actually, uh, just talked to him yesterday. Oh, he's, really? uh, he's in town playing the, um, playing the Pistons, actually, and he's at my house in uh, Troy. And I just talked to him a little bit and just joking around with him. No so, kidding? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Well, that is uh, that is really cool. That is really cool. Uh, Coach uh, Wesley tells me that you're a big soccer guy growing up. Mm -hmm. it big. That, was that one of your? I mean, if you had to, if you if if you had to, to choose your. How, let, let's ask this question first. You, you played soccer. Did you play basketball at the same time? And then, so it started to go toward the the basketball route. Or how how did that evolve? Well, I played soccer more than basketball growing up, definitely. And mm -hmm. then. As it was going on, I think it was my sophomore year, I just realized, like, all right, I think I want to play basketball way more. I'm just – I love the game way way more than I do soccer. So I just gave up soccer. I was on varsity, actually, my freshman and sophomore year. Wow. Wow. Um, well, that's what Coach Wesley says. that he, can, he goes, you can sort of tell the way he sort of plays. You can tell he used to play soccer. But one, one thing he sort of called you is a uh, action Jackson, a little bit – you get to do a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit of, like, everything on the floor. Would you say that's pretty fair assessment so yeah, far? Yeah, that, that's definitely kind of what I think I bring to the table. I just try and do all that I can, really, because my athleticism is definitely my strength. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody that you try to pattern your game around? Is there anybody that you, you try and – or that you like to watch that you, that you try and, you know, take something from them? Because it, you're, you're a unique guy. In the fact that you're, you know, a six three point guard, it, it's a different matchup. You know, Ronald Booth for Wayne State's five eight. You know, there's a bunch of littler guards around the league that yeah. you're you're a size mismatch for a lot of guys. But is there anybody maybe in the NBA or college basketball that you kind of try to pattern your game around? I wouldn't say pattern, but I mean, I like to watch Russell Westbrook, and I just see how much activity he does on the court, and I just kind of match his energy and match his mm -hmm. intensity, and just match what he's doing on the court, whether it's scoring, rebounding, or passing the ball. But, I mean, obviously I'm not West Oh, <laughs> well, sure. I mean, the, the triple doubles would be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll take those for sure. Um, and we're visiting here with uh, Chris Dorsey of your Grand Valley State Lakers here on the uh, GBSU Basketball Weekly Insider at Jets Pizza and Allendale. And, uh, uh, Chris, if, 
you know, if, if we could too. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl last night? Yes, I caught the ending of it. Actually. You caught the ending of it. Where did you watch it? What buddies were you hanging out um, watching it? I caught, I caught when he uh, when he made that catch. Oh, when, when Julian was, Edelman Julian, made that catch yep. off the, mm. I don't know what you'd call it off the, pa- one Defenders, of the Patriots' yeah, legs. Yeah. I mean, there was three defenders. I don't know how he even caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, were you rooting for, uh, for for the Patriots or Atlanta, or I was, was you just wanted a good I game? I was rooting for the Patriots. Okay. Mm-hmm. How about how about some of your other uh, teammates too? Did you guys talk about it much? Uh, most of them are rooting for the Patriots, and we were watching the game at first, and then they were down, so we just kind of stopped watching and pay attention. Right. And then someone called us and told us they were. It was like twenty-eight twenty, I think, and then we immediately went back and watched. Did you flip game. a video game on at that point? And we just started hanging out. And oh, talking. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Because because I was wondering because it said uh, that was one of the other uh, favorite things to do is play playing different video games. I just wonder if you guys move from the Super Bowl. Uh, we like to ask all the players that come on here a couple of just uh, interesting questions called the full court press. Um, so with with this in mind, do you have a dream job, and what is it? A dream job. Um, well, right now I'm majoring in business, and I like sports, so my dream job would probably be like a sports agent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sort of like Jerry Maguire type? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. Show me the money. Um, if uh, What is the last movie that you've seen? The last movie was The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Probably not as uh, good as Waterboy, right? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> classic. Um, it, I know a lot of times you guys wear sweats and that type of thing, too. We'll, we'll get this thrown around about the... Best dressed person on the team? The best dressed person, I'm going to have to go with Miles, Miles Miller. Okay. Mm-hmm. He, he seems like that, too. He seems yeah, like he's, he's a pretty sharp dresser. He's got some nice shoes. <laughs> Is there anybody you want to put on blast as the worst dresser? Um, I'm going to have to go either Justin Greeson or Deshaun. <laughs> well, it, it, since we're talking about the worst, this is a chance to call out your brotherhood here of the worst dancer. I understand that there's certain videos you guys might dance to or something, or the certain certain music. Because there's somebody that is not on rhythm. Worst at all. dancer. Um, I'm gonna have to go Trevin. Trevin Alexander. Ouch. Really? <laughs> okay. Grandpa Trevin. Not yeah. gonna like that one. <laughs> right. Um, DJ, I like how you asked that three-point question. How do we phrase it? Because we got a lot of contenders here. Okay. Uh, who would win in the three-point contest? So we started off asking uh, Luke and Trevin. They were on the first couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Three-point contest between them. Who would win? Obviously, they both picked themselves. And, you know, Juwan and, and Zach West obviously have really good numbers from the outside as well. So uh, you're a guard. You get them the ball a lot, too. If you had to pick one of those guys, who wins a three-point contest between Luke, Trevin, Zach, and Juwan? I'm going to have to go with Luke. Okay. I'm going to have to go with Luke. Any reason why? Just, I mean, you've seen him in the gym, obviously. I've just seen him in the gym and just he hits a lot of threes. Who, yeah. win, who wins the dunk contest? Juwan, no doubt. Wow, <laughs> that was a quick answer. Juwan. Not even going to put yourself in the category. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I've just seen him do too many crazy dunks. Okay. <laughs> Well, a very humble guy. Chris, you're, you're an exciting player to watch. Uh, continued success on this team. Let's go get to, hey, four upcoming home games. That's got to make you guys feel good, too, just about to, you know, a couple of recent tougher games you've had. But to be able to come home here and not be on the road for as long, that's got to help. Yeah, it definitely does help. It's just nice to be get back into a routine at home and just have our home crowd. So it should be good. Well, it should be good. Hey, Chris, thanks so much for coming on the program, okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. All right. uh, Chris Dorsey uh, joining us here on the Basketball Weekly Insider. When we return, we'll tell you a little bit more about that Northwood game this upcoming Thursday night. Remember, uh, the first 1,000 GVSU students get beanies. I guess those are hats, right, DJ? Those are hats, yes. Okay, I didn't exactly know what a beanie was. All right, winter hats. All right, there we go. Uh, And then on a Saturday is Kids Day, where all kids 12 and under are free. And uh, that a uh, bunch of kids' activities going on from noon till 2. So, again, that's on Saturday. So, an action-packed Thursday and Saturday coming up for your uh, Lakers and their schedule. Uh, we'll be back with head coach Rick Wesley right after this here on the Grand Valley Sports Network.
We were born here. We grew up here. Raised our kids here. Went to school here. We live here. We are the home team. And we're all in accord here at uh, Jets Pizza in Allendale. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jeremy Bolker alongside DJ Foster and head coach uh, Rick Wesley. We just heard from uh, Chris Dorsey. Great stuff right there. Exciting guy. Exciting guy to watch play. That's why you got to come out and uh, cheer on your Grand Valley State Lakers this Thursday and this Saturday. And then, of course, the following Thursday and Saturday as well. Nice four-game homestand. Folks, they only got five games left in the regular season, so we need to cheer them on here coming up. The four uh, big games to their schedule, Grand Valley 13-10 and 10, uh, overall. And a reminder, uh, this uh, upcoming segment is brought to you by Two Men in a Truck, Movers Who Care. Coach, real quick, I want to throw out a uh, question here from the crowd. Uh, this is, uh, is an interesting one. Uh, where would you rather be than here tonight? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, that could be a lot of places. Uh, oh, I don't know. Europe or yeah, Hawaii. Right. I don't know. Right, someplace. Right. Um, this is not so bad. Though. Right, we got right. good good food. Mm -hmm. you know, relati company. Relatively good company here. <laughs> Some friends. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. This is, this is, this is fine. Yes. I think um, they tried to walk you into something there. So, you, you, you yeah. did a nice job with that one. Yes. No, well, uh, well, good stuff. Well, Coach, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, early on in the program, too, about – uh, you know, moving on and getting ready for this upcoming home stand. But let's talk a little bit more specifically about Northwood and, uh, you know, what they bring to the table uh, as you look to play them on uh, this upcoming Thursday night. Well, they've, they've, they've been a little bit of an up-and-down team. Uh, I think, you know, probably the one that stands out, they beat Saginaw Valley here a week or so ago, which was a big win for them. And, uh, you know, that's kind of their rival game. And uh, so, you know, they, they've shown that they've got the ability to kind of rise up and, and to play good basketball. They're, they're kind of a big team. You know, they're big and strong in every position. Uh, you know, uh, Nick Spitzley uh, is, is a good shooter for them, you know, someone we were very familiar with. Uh, uh, they play a, a kid named Shab at the point guard, who's very big. I mean, he's he's six five, six six, so he's almost like a small forward. Matt Kroll has been uh, sort of their steady scorer. He's kind of a um, you know big burly uh, you know three man, I guess, but it's almost like he's a four man. Uh, Weaver's an outstanding athlete. So I, when I think of him, I think about again big, strong, physical. You know, they're not a fly it up and down uh, the floor type of team. Um, they're, they're apt to try to do anything, you know, a team like them that's struggling to get, get in the mix here in the conference tournament, uh, a little bit of a, a guerrilla warfare kind of a team. You know, they'll mix up their defense. They'll do different things on offense, and, and that's kind of the way it is. If you're not a dominant team <clears throat> that has found a, a, a talent level and a system that works game after game, you know, you're, you're willing to do anything. And so you've got to just expect the unexpected, but uh, certainly our ability to control – uh, that paint area, I think, will be a big thing with them. We had gotten off to a pretty good start over there in our game first time around, which really helped. Yeah, we, I was just going to bring that up, Coach, because you played them in mid-January. Uh, you got 82 points from your five starters, all five starters in double figures. So certainly it was a balanced effort. You know, Trevin had 21, uh, eight rebounds, five assists. Miles Miller had a great game, 19 points, uh, seven assists. Uh, Miles didn't miss a shot, four steals as well. Uh, what are you able to take away from that game? I mean, it was you know now three, three, four weeks ago. Um, but what were you able to take from that? You hope to try and kind of repeat yeah, you know, again? like I say, it's been so long. I don't know if there really is anything. I sure. mean, uh, we're we're sort of in a different place. They're probably in a different place too. I think it's just, you know, we we're just trying to get uh, you know after last week, we've got to get back to a level of uh, consistency, predictability about who we are. Uh, so I, I think, you know, for us, it really is more about who we are and what we do. And offensively, we've got to get back on track. You know, that was an anemic uh, performance on Saturday. I, you know, our defense was okay. It wasn't terrible. You know, they didn't shoot a tremendous uh, percentage, nor did they score a ton of points against us. It was our inability to generate offense to kind of keep them on their heels. So, you know, we keep we look at it every day uh, uh, and talk about it every day and, and try to – find you know both the, the best sets and the best scheme but at the same time I, I always feel like 
defense is largely the coach's responsibility, and offense is kind of the, the players doing what they do. Uh, you know, no matter what, you, how you do it, you know, they come back to each guy has a certain skill set that uh, they need to hang their hat on. They need to figure out how to fit that skill set within whatever the framework of uh, what we're doing. Especially coming into this final stretch of the season, coach, is ever uh, more important that I imagine you rely on your seniors to really give this team some. Well, there's no question. Too. I mean, you would hope that they're, you know, coming down the stretch and their their sense of urgency is greater than everybody else's. I mean, they're, the tunnel, uh, you know, they're getting to the end of the tunnel here. And, and if they can't see that, there's something wrong with them. These guys at this level have played basketball their whole lives. They've, you know, they've, uh, from their high school career to their AAU's career, you know, they've traveled, they've done a lot of things to, to get to this point, and it's so important how you, you know, how you finish, is how you will remember the experience that you had, and and uh, you know, try to try to, uh, you know, impact that uh, or, you know, talk to them about that last week, and you know, Juwan is, uh, you know, for the most part had a pretty good senior year after a tough uh, junior year, but uh, has has kind of hit hit the rocks here lately, you know, he's not playing as well as I think he's capable. Luke Reiskamp's been here a long time. There's been a lot of, he's been through a lot of battles. He's, uh, um, you know, it's easy. You can go one of two ways. You can either be weary and, you know, kind of mentally start checking out, thinking about the next stage of your life, or you really hone in and, and try to, you know, take it to one more uh, notch up uh, uh, the ladder in terms of performance. So, you know, we need we need those guys to step up. I feel like Trevin has is, is done that all year. I think he has uh, kind of mentally just com totally committed himself to what we're doing. He makes some mistakes, but, you know, from a leadership standpoint, from a, um, you know, just a emotional standpoint, uh, you know, he, he's there every day. So, you know, I keep pushing those other guys to do the same, and for the most part, they've done a pretty good job. But, you know, coming down the stretch, there's, an, there's a whole other, you know, step to take. Hopefully we can get some deja vu on Thursday because your three seniors combined for 50 points against Northwood the last time. You played them again, Northwood and Grand Valley State uh, on Thursday night, an 8 p.m. start in Allendale in the Fieldhouse Arena. It's Throwback Thursday, Coach. Bring out your uh, your best old suit. Actually, I just wear what I normally wear. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Usually, by the time stuff comes into fashion, you know, it goes right back out. Yeah, yeah. it goes right back out. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to, to what uh, what you have for for Thursday nights. Just remember uh, your outfit. belt. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or one of my student assistants. As long as yeah, they bring the stuff. Yeah. Up, someone <laughs> someone's wearing a belt. You'll be good. Yeah. Back up. All right, more Laker basketball talk when we come back here on the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider. It's presented by Rivertown Honda, and it's all here on the Grand Valley Sports Network. kids here, went to school here, we live here, we are the home team. Welcome back in the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider with head coach Rick Wesley. We're here at Jets Pizza in Allendale. Lakers starting a four-game homestand coming up on Thursday. But, uh, Coach, a quick note because we just heard the Luke Reiskamp highlight. Uh, Luke moved into 20th place in Grand Valley State history in career scoring, uh, 1,226 points just past Courtney James. Uh, he's also passed a couple other guys recently. Ryan Saban was on that list. I think Chris Raven played back in the in the late 70s is next up on the list. But uh, Luke's getting in some pretty good company up there. Yeah, he's had a great career. He's been a good scorer for us ever since he got here. Uh, you know, love Luke. Feel bad for Courtney. <laughs> Bumped <laughs> Court. Courtney James was an outstanding point guard on our, one of our conference championship team. Now teaching over in East Kentwood. And uh, you mentioned Ryan Saban across, of course, who had a great career for us. And Marcus Hall was yeah, on there. Marcus Hall. Recently, uh, yep. Uh, or, or Mike Hall. Mike Hall, uh, Mike yes. Mike Hall, Marcus yep. Hall's from Northern. Mike Hall just moved to California and 
You mentioned uh, going up the ladder. Chris Raven is next on the ladder. Chris was a great player for Coach uh, Villamere back in the 70s, one of the best guards. Uh, I think he played basketball and golf here, I think. Oh. Lives out in Arizona now and then Big Ron Polis, who uh, – is down in Bloomington, Indiana. Is, we're coming for you, big round. A lot of big names. Listening. So, uh, a tremendous accomplishment from uh, from Luke. That's a lot of points. Absolutely, and he'll have a chance to add some more this weekend. We wanted to touch on the Lake Superior State game coming up on Saturday. Uh, you, you bring them back into town. It's always it's always a really physical, tough game with them. They play a different style. Really try and play fast paced, uh, press a lot. They have a Kem G. Williams, who's one of the most unique players in the league. Uh, he's averaging 22 points per game and eight assists per game. And so he certainly is kind of the, the engine that drives their car. Yeah, probably more than any one player uh, is responsible for their offense. I don't know that anybody else, uh, you know, 20-some points, eight, eight assists. That could be anywhere from 16 to 24 points. So, you know, 40 to 50 points a game, uh, he's directly responsible Correct. for. So, yep. um, you know, he's a tremendous player. They really – they really shot the ball well up there. They've had some bumps in the road since that time. They had a good win against Michigan Tech, uh, overtime win on Saturday. Um, they're a tough team to match up with, you know, dynamic uh, point guard, kind of a tiny Archibald mm -hmm. uh, for you veteran guys led the NBA in points. And I think the last guy to lead the league in both points and assists in the same year. Wow. Um, and then those guys play off him. You know, they got good shooters around him. So that makes it really difficult to, to – to, bring much help to him uh, when they have those shooters out there with him. Well, you had talked about uh, them s struggling a little bit. I mean, they had fallen three games in a row, and now they're, you know, they're, they've won three in a row. And just like you guys and, and DJ, I know, I think we'll try to hit the next segment. Let's run ahead it now. But, uh, you know, ever so important goes without saying. Obviously, every win is important, but especially with these teams that you're competing, you're lobbying for positioning in the GLIAC tournament. You know, these are just enormous games. Well, yeah, and we're running out of games. You know, mm -hmm. you only got five left. So, I mean, whether they're uh, teams you're competing with for the standing or just teams in general, we've got to, you know, we've got to rack up some more wins here. Um, you know, we've, again, we've had some ups and downs. Uh, last week was a down week. We have got to quickly rebound. We don't have time to uh, sulk. We don't have time to pout. We don't have time to, um, you know, redo the offense or defense. We just got to do what we do and do it better. Uh, and for longer periods of time. So, um, you know, anxious. I was glad we got this practice under a belt today. It's tough to be off yesterday after a tough uh, game on Saturday. But, uh, you know, we're moving forward, and uh, we'll come back tomorrow and get after it again. That segment is brought to us by Fox Motors, only the best. Come on back, one final break here. We will come back and look at the Gleak standings with Coach, and uh, we'll wrap this one up here on the GVSU Basketball Weekly Insider with Head Coach Rick Wesley. You're listening live on the Grand Valley Sports Network. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Brian, as it stands, this is, what, a minute and a half, two-minute break? So we'll have probably, what, roughly about three minutes when we return? Ish. If you wouldn't mind saying one minute and then 30 seconds once you start the music, and then if you think I'm cutting it close, just maybe say 10 seconds or something like that, or five seconds real quick, but... Um, no, I appreciate it. Okay. DJ, you want to take this back in? Sure. You want to take this back in quick and then set up the GLIAC standings, and okay. then I'll just sort of wrap it up with saying, you know, mm -hmm. hey, this Thursday again, you know, against Northwood, and then Saturday, Kids Day should be a nice atmosphere. Should be a lot yep. of screaming kids, kids running out onto the court in the middle of the game, <laughs> type of thing. Uh, <laughs> You're talking about your kids? Or? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Henry, Henry running out and doing a snow away. angel in the middle of the floor. Yes. He, yeah, he did that during the during the show. <laughs> at, show? At yeah. I, I bet we're going to – I think I'm going to try to have her bring him out, like, next week. Okay. Add a little fanfare to the – Add a little craziness to the <laughs> – Yes.
Welcome back in the GBSC Basketball Weekly Insider. DJ Foster, Jeremy Bolker, head coach Rick Wesley here with you. Before we uh, wrap things up here, I'd like to thank Modern Office brings spaces to life. So, Coach, four-game homestand starts on Thursday. Northwood Thursday, Lake Superior State on Saturday. Then next week it's Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan. And uh, the good news is out of these last five games, uh, you play three games against teams that are either right there with you or right ahead of you in the standings, so you can make up some ground. Yeah, well, it just means a lot of things are going to happen. With, I mean, the, the standings are, you know, Ferris has got a good good, uh, uh, good jump on everybody there. Finley's kind of gotten a, a pretty good uh, jump on the people in the south. But, boy, it is so bunched up. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things could happen, mm -hmm. and it's certainly not clear, you know, who the next best team is. And, um, you know, like last year, I think it came down to that last game of the year to, to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same this year. And uh, our, our job now is just to focus on the next game and, uh, you know, try to try to right the ship, try to come out and play with a little more aggressiveness, a little bit more physicality. Um, and and I, think, I think we will. I think we will. You know, this is a good group of guys. Uh, you know, we don't have any real chemistry issues. You know, I think they genuinely like each other. Uh, I think they'll come back and uh, be a little bit more refocused uh, uh, and hungry on Thursday. Well, Northwood is uh, throwback Thursday and then uh, Kids Day on Saturday. And uh, as, as we go into this final homestand, you're first in the league in attendance. So that would be uh, a good thing to keep uh, yeah. to keep. And we appreciate it. And like I say, that, that makes a difference. You know, our, uh, our marketing people do a good job. A lot of promotions coming up uh, yep. in this, these next couple games. And uh, it's a fun time to come out and uh, bring your kids. Good family entertainment. Other than me yelling at the coaches, I try to, or the referees, <laughs> I try to try to remember that in kids' day. Try to temper my uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Temper my enthusiasm. Right, temper the enthusiasm. enthusiasm. That's a good there we go. Right. We, we like uh, that one. We but, like no, it one. makes it makes a big difference, and there's a comfort in being at home and certainly knowing that you've got people behind you uh, is inspiring and, and uh, often pushes you to play, you know, even better. Well, uh, Coach, it should be a lot of fun. Again, uh, folks, if you want tickets, uh, you can go to uh, gbsutickets.com or you can find out more information, all those links at gbsulakers.com. And, of course, if it's a last-minute decision, come on up uh, and uh, buy tickets right uh, at the field house there. Well, that'll wrap things up. A uh, big thank you to Chris Dorsey. Very nice getting to know him. Uh, to the uh, fine Laker fans out here tonight, thank you, folks, for coming out here. And uh, Jim Pettis and the great staff here. Remember, heart-shaped pizzas start at on Friday. So uh, again, for DJ Foster and head coach Rick Wesley, I'm Jeremy Bolker. Have a great night, everybody, and go Lakers.